Hi, I'm Lucas, and my Physics 2 final project is a deep dive on piano mechanics and sound. So we're going to start off with how a piano works. So shown here is a pretty neat animation of what is called the piano action. What's shown is just a cross section for a single key in the piano, and keep in mind there are 88 keys, so there's 88 of these things strewn across the entire instrument. So we can analyze this first in the lens of mechanical energy. When we apply energy to push the piano key down, there are three main levers, although they can be broken down further. And the main idea is that they transfer the mechanical energy to the motion of this hammer. So the hammer will hit the string, the string will vibrate, and release energy in the form of sound. Part of the mechanical energy is also used to lift the damper. So while the key is pressed down, the damper is lifted up and the string is allowed to vibrate. And then when the key is released, the damper falls back on the string and that stops it from vibrating and stops the sound. So bottom line, the piano key's inner mechanisms conserve mechanical energy as it transfers kinetic energy into sound energy. One angle to analyze is amplitude, the volume of the sound. And as a quick refresher, striking a piano key harder simply gives the key string system more mechanical energy. So more total kinetic energy gets converted to sound energy. Basically, it's louder. And this allows for dynamics and a wider range of sound to express through the instrument. One thing to note though, is that strings have a low surface area and they don't displace much air for the sound to travel in. So that raises a pretty good question of how are pianos actually that loud? And that's answered by the soundboard. This is the wooden sheet below the strings that is the main source of sound that we hear from a piano. Although the strings are the first things to vibrate, the vibrations are transferred over to the soundboard and due to its larger surface area, it can displace a lot larger volume of air and therefore a lot larger amplitude of the sound wave. It's also built with a specific type of wood known as Sitka spruce, and that material specifically filters certain overtones and gives the piano its unique sound. Some people would refer to that as timbre. And overtones are a very interesting tangent to go off on, but uh, that's a discussion for another day. Anyways, to reiterate, any instrument with strings, whether it's a violin, guitar, anything else, um, usually needs a soundboard in order to project all of the sound from the strings. To put it in simpler terms, you can kind of think of them as giant speakers that amplify the vibration of the strings. So an additional angle to look at this through is how each string produces a distinct tone. The range of notes on the piano correspond to the range of pitch and frequency of each string. And we know that's defined by how often it oscillates within a given second. So with the basics out of the way, we can use some physics math to help find the factors that affect string frequency. So we can start with a classic equation like frequency equals velocity over wavelength. And shown over here in the orange box, the wavelength for a wave of fundamental frequency is twice the length. So F equals V over 2L. We also know that a note of twice the frequency will have the same tone, but at a higher perceived pitch which is known as an octave. So for an instrument like the piano that ranges seven octaves long, it would seem a bit absurd that the lowest note string is two to the seventh power times as long as the highest note string. Um, so you can reach that conclusion, but it's incomplete because we have to account for the other variable, which is velocity. And this velocity refers to the speed of the wave produced by um, the strings in the soundboard. So in this case, V can be defined as the square root of the string tension over its linear density, which is defined by the string mass divided by string length. So that ends us up with this equation over here. Um, and I think it's worth noting that the structure of it bears some resemblance to periodic spring and periodic pendulum equations. Right now, I can't really explain why, but it's a pretty interesting loose end to answer in the future. So great, we have an equation now. And now we can properly explain with our physics math why pianos are able to fit in so many strings of different frequencies. We can see that frequency doesn't just depend on the string length, but also its tension and its thickness. And we can see this with the lower end strings being thicker as well as longer. You'll also notice that the low end strings, the lowest ones only have one string, 
maybe going to two, and then the mid to high end strings have three strings per note. This goes back to the earlier notion about surface area and amplitude. More strings are needed for higher tones in order to even out the surface area so that each note achieves the same standard amplitude, because you want the same uniform range of volume for every note. Anyways, that brings us to a little bit of a demonstration, so I'm going to let my past self take it away. So I've removed some of the boards on the piano to demonstrate the piano mechanics in action. Funnily enough, we're going to start with the piano action. So I can play a note and you can observe the key lever move up and down. And the other two levers, of course, um, are not visible from here. But we can go over the top and observe how the hammer and the damper kind of react to how I play the note depending on the speed and the force. To the pedals, the sustain pedal will lift all of the dampers using a mechanism, um, and that allows all of the strings to resonate without any cutoff. And if I let go, simple. And then we have the soft pedal, and what this does is it moves over all of the hammers slightly so that they hit less strings or they hit strings less directly, so it'll be softer. Now, not every key has the same amount of strings, as we discussed. For the three string ones, the hammers only hit two of them. Uh, for these ones, I think they just hit it less directly. But that should conclude the demonstration, and hopefully it gave you a better understanding of how pianos produce sound and how we control it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, that concludes my deep dive into the sound of pianos, and it was kind of fascinating to finally make sense of how everything worked and especially how instruments like the piano are directly designed around the principles of physics. Knowing all this definitely makes me appreciate the complexity of the sound we use to make music. And thank you!